The Manita of Betmore Gang, Sundarbans, Bangladesh, when, I proposed to sit in a cage as a bait. The story is taken from the book, With the Wild Animals of Bengal. Written by Yusuf S. Ahmed. He narrates, This was also in the Sundarbans. An old tiger, in Betmore Gang had killed a number of men. Some were woodcutters, but mostly they were fishermen. It was a very good area for fishing, near the Bay of Bengal and yet sheltered. When the woodcutters were killed, in the forest, their bodies were recovered, but the fishermen were carried away from their boats at night, and very often the cases were not even reported. This went on for several years, and no forest work was allowed in that area. When, I heard the various stories, I decided to construct a strong cage with sundry poles, for those who don't know sundry tree. It is dominant mangrove tree species of the Sundarbans, I decided to sit in it on an open boat in a stream in that area. If the tiger got up on the boat, all I need have done was, to push the barrel of the rifle out, through the poles of the cage and pull the trigger. I had to wait till my daughter Rezia left for Shillong, before ordering the construction of the cage. The news soon got about, and a number of Boalais the local woodcutters came to me, for permission to cut Golpata from that forest, for those who don't know, what does Golpata means, it is a variety of nipper palm. They were taking the village shikaris, and Odges or village apothecary, who would keep the tiger away from them. As, there was no trace of this old tiger for more than two months, it was suggested that, it might have even died a natural death. I agreed to open a Golpata coupe. Instructions were however issued that, no one was to leave, any Golpata in a dingy boat at night, beside the big boat. From the stories I heard, I learned that it was generally at night, that this tiger used to swim to the fishermen's boats, and carry them away. People were cautious at the beginning, but became lax as the days passed. In one party of Golpata cutters, there were three persons, one was young and newlywed, while the other two were older. A lot of Golpata was cut one day, and as it was already late. When they returned to their big boat, the Golpata was left in the dingy, and they started preparing their meal, instead of transferring the leaves onto the big boat. They were all tired, after the long day's work, had their meal and retired. The oldest man, slept along the small opening in the roof of the boat, through which, the water in the boat is bowled out. The other two men slept across the boat, with their feet towards the slit. They had a hurricane lantern hanging from the roof, inside the boat, and they all fell asleep. Towards the later part of the night, the moon was up, the man-eating tiger swam to the dingy, got up on the heaped-up golpata, and entered into the boat. He walked across the old man, without touching him, and caught the young man by the throat. He gave a groan, and spread out his legs and arms, which woke up the other two men. When they opened their eyes, they saw the hairy visitor in the boat, but even before they could shout, the man-eater jumped into the water, over the dingy, with the dead young man still in its mouth. The two men saw their companion carried away by the tiger, which entered into the forest on reaching the bank. They started shouting, and tins were beaten, and gongs were sounded from all the neighboring boats. The coupe office, where the cage was being constructed by carpenters, was a few miles off this place. The coupe officer was informed of this incident next morning, and the golpata cutters all became panicky again. There was a local shikari, who was supervising the construction of the cage. He came down with the coupe officer, armed with a gun, to the place of occurrence. They entered the forest in a body, followed the pug marks of the tiger, and found that the body of the man killed was carried about 50 yards, along the bank of the Kaal or a narrow stream. A good part, consisting of the stomach, intestines and breast, was eaten. The head, the back and the legs still remained. The local shikari, then laid two trap guns, one on the side to which the tiger retreated, at the approach of the men, and the other on the side from which, the tiger carried the dead man. It was quite late in the afternoon, before they completed the laying of the guns. They then went back to their respective dingies. They did not go more than 200 yards, from the junction of the small Carl and the Betmore gang. Within half an hour, of leaving the dead body of the man with two guns on either side, they heard a big report of gunfire. 
They did not go back to the kill that evening, but proceeded to the coupe office. Next morning, they returned to the site with more guns in their hands, and found that the tiger was lying dead on the side to which it had retreated. It had two bullet holes on its head, almost joined to each other. On getting the news, I went to the Golpata Coupe after a few days, and got the head and the skin of the tiger. The animal was so old, that even the fur had dropped off its body in many patches. From the head, it appeared that one top canine tooth was missing, and only half of the other was still sticking in the upper jaw. It could not probably kill any animal except human beings. It could not chew any hard bone. The body must also have shrunk, so that when it had returned to the kill, and struck the wire tied to the trigger of the trap guns, the bullet, instead of hitting its heart or lung, hit the head, which must have been turned towards the gun at the time. Anyway that was the end of the old man-eating tiger of Betmore gang, and I never got the chance to sit in the cage.